Okay. Scott, I'll be right at you. Right thank at you. Go ahead. Yeah. I'd like to talk about collateral damage. Collateral damage. I can't talk any louder. I'm sorry. You know, I'm doing the best I can. Collateral damage is what, like, when civilians get killed in the war. Well, civilians have been killed in the geothermal wars here. I, I knew three, and then I found two more women who had ectopic pregnancies during '91. They all had they all had their blow ups that are very life threatening later in the year. But when I asked them when they got pregnant, they all were pregnant during the time of the geothermal blowout. Also, the EPA had a small team that came down to accept a, a, a little a little while later to examine the plant and. One of the the lawyers of the group was surprised, and the next day she had a miscarriage. Miscarriages, spontaneous abortions. The children in the school were always, you know, they were so irritable. They were really the whole schools were really having a great, great, you know, problem with the children because they were acting so so aberrantly, and also their SAT scores, all their scores were so low, and I, I was so happy when I heard, because lead is also a big contaminant, I was so happy when the state said, oh, we're going to test for lead in the schools, but did they come to Puna and test? No, they didn't test for lead in the schools in Puna. You know, we don't even have any air monitors near the school. More than 50% of the children are sitting there with atomizers on their desks. <laughs> Collateral damage. Babies died. All you have to do is look up state <laughs> statistics. It tells you when the fatalities go up. It tells you when the when the infant fatalities and the and the miscarriages it gives you all that information and all of those spike periods they coordinate with when geothermal has been known to pollute the area with hydrogen sulfide. All the information is out there in the medical records and it would be really easy to find uncollateral damage. I have my medical records. The the hole that was the place that was hurting in my chest right after the blowout here and was bigger and bigger and I would go to the clinic and report this and I do have copies. I just found out this year when someone read my x rays and finally told me what a blem was. A blem and where it is. It's that spot in my chest. It's a hole in my lung. You know, they, they, people die, heart attacks, pneumonia, life-threatening illnesses, all kinds of crazy. It's just, just think about the summer of '91. I, I challenge you. Think about the summer of '91. If you were here in Tahoe, or you had friends or family here in Tahoe, or in in the spring, early in the year, February and March in 93. What happened to you? Did you have an overwhelming family catastrophe? Did you know friends who died? Sort of thinking back, I did. I don't even want to go there. It's that scary about what happened to me during those time. Collateral damage, Billy. And that's what you have to think about. And it's, you know, you can say all you like about Iceland, but I read that I read that report that the, the mayor's committee just put out. It's not working in Iceland. Is there complete pristine? It's not complete, but it's almost 50% of the most pristine land 
on the face of this earth is destroyed. Because when you have that much electricity, suddenly you get smelting plants, you get, there are all kinds of things that are in the works. And they are ocean strip mining out there. You know, let us not be naive. We do not want unlimited electricity here. It is, we, we need some power. We can do it modestly. We can conserve our needs. You don't have to have an electric everything. You know, this is ridiculous. You know, we have, we have to take care of the people, Billy. Absolutely. How much collateral damage do you want? I have figures. I'll send you some stuff if you really want to see it. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. That's it. I had uh, that gentleman who's been...